Ah, hello, Jasper here again. I believe that amazing device is what is known as a flit switch. However, on the subject of amazing things, you will not believe what I have just found in the sanctuary. You should come back as soon as you possibly can. This sanctuary contains an armory, within which there are some truly remarkable weapons, heroic weapons, which your father left for you. This way, please. Now, admittedly, these weapons don't appear particularly impressive yet. However, according to the book, they actually change as you use them, becoming more deadly and developing fantastic properties. They are living weapons, and the way in which you fight with them determines how they evolve. Apparently, as you use it, the blade... That sword is certain to cut a swathe through your foes, and depending on whom you kill and how, it will grow ever more powerful. Well, now that you have a proper weapon, you should return to the chambers underneath Brightwall Academy. Ah, yes, the flit switch. Now, the way you activate these is by hitting them. Your new weapon should serve that purpose ably.
Ah, so the weapons in question were also left for you by your father. They are in the armory. Like the sword and hammer, these astonishing weapons evolve over time as you use them, becoming ever more fearsome. They can cause more damage and achieve other incredible effects. The rifle. Marvellous. No one's going to get close to you if you don't want them to. The uh, pistol will remain here, should you wish to use it instead. In the meantime, experiment and see what incredible properties are waiting to be unlocked. You have done well. Now, step into the light. There is much you need to know. Congratulations, hero. Touching the guild seal was an indication of what you could become. Reaching the music box has proven what you already are. No one but a hero could have done it. You have begun to learn what powers you possess, and there is still greater potential within you. But you have only taken the first step in your journey. Albion is crying out for a revolution, and for someone to lead it. Winning supporters to your cause will be hard. Leading them against Logan will be an even greater challenge. But it's one you must accomplish. I'll make him pay for what he did. This is not a matter of personal vengeance. As long as your brother sits on the throne, Albion is in great danger. Open the music box. It will show you the truth.
This is my Albion. Its cities will bow to my law, or they will burn. Its mountains will bend to my will, or they will fall. This is my Albion. Its people will do as I say, or they will die. Its future will be as I decree, or it will end. I've seen what must be done, and nothing will stand in my way. We will be greater, and we will be stronger, no matter what sacrifices we must make. This is my Albion, and I will see it destroyed before I surrender it. If any part of you still doubted the necessity of a revolution, you have your answer. The kingdom will face its own annihilation under your brother's rule. Now, do whatever you must to gain your first ally, for you cannot lead a rebellion without followers. Sabine is a good man, and his people are strong. <laughs> Blessed index cards. You made it. This is cause for great rejoicing. Albion has a hero again. If ever I can be of assistance, I will be honored to serve you. I knew you would succeed, sir. You now have proof positive of your heroic status. And I believe Walter has made some progress with the mercenary problem. He is waiting for you outside the local tavern. You were successful then. Bloody marvelous. You'll be glad to know I have some information on the mercenaries Sabine mentioned. They're led by a man called Saker. He used to be a soldier, but always had more in common with bandits and cutthroats than the military. His men are holed up in a small fortress in the mountains, so it won't be easy to get in. But I have a plan. Come with me.
One of the mercenaries. A cold-blooded killer. His name's Clarence, but everybody calls him Jimmy. He was drinking in the pub all day and generally making life unpleasant for everyone. It wasn't hard to get him completely pickled. These young thugs. Bloody lightweights, if you ask me. Anyway, take his clothes and you'll have a free pass into their camp. Just try not to think about what those stains might be. Hope you're here to buy. Top. Hmm. You're not likely to convince anyone. Anyone without a bit of extra effort. Even these idiots will notice if you don't have his beard or tattoos. I'm sure you can get hold of what you need around town, though. In the meantime, I'll find out who to talk to about getting food to the dwellers. They might not have much to spare here, but they're kind people. They'll just need a little convincing. Anyway, good luck dealing with Saker and his mercenaries. It'll be your first taste of real battle. But I know you'll do just fine. Thank you! The more you spend, the better goods I can afford to stock. I buy stuff. So come here and uh, I'll buy your stuff, okay? You're not the sort who attacks unarmed villagers, are you? I might keep that one for myself. Pie of the day, I reckon. Smells delicious. You're a whiz with a rolling pin. That'll fetch a good price. Finest products in Brightwall available Join here. Me always with our gems and gems. I might keep that one for myself. You're a whiz with a rolling pin. Spend your way to happiness in. That'll fetch a good price. You can roll with the best of them. You've amassed enough money to buy a house. Houses are excellent investments. Besides, you'll need somewhere to live if you meet that special someone. Mmm, sublime. That'll fetch a good price. Delicious. Yesterday I saved a town from the big monster. Smells delicious. All kind of apparel at great prices. Mmm, sublime. If business doesn't pick up soon, I'll be wonderful dough work. Delicious. You appear to have earned enough gold to purchase the rather repulsive items you require to complete your mercenary disguise. A most impressive feat for a member of the royal family. Of course, should you have acquired a taste for labor, you may continue working for as long as you wish.
What is it you need? You're paying top gold for a top quality item. Yeah, it may be. Your new garments are ready should you want them. That beard should be a real boon if you're seeking a job in the technology sector. You can use these mannequins to store your current look in order to easily select it later. Feel free to change the color of your clothes or hair using the dyes. That is, after all, what they are for. ounce of gold. Ah, hello. I trust you are finding everything all right? Be sure to teach those mercenaries a lesson, and I'm sure that they deserve one. Hi, Jimmy. Back from killing some dwellers. Come on in. You've been up too much lately? Nah. Nah, me neither. I sometimes wish I'd join me dad with a family business. Why didn't you? Well, I never saw myself as a sugar salesman. Oh, and it wasn't really feasible west. after I killed him and all. Oh, shame. Hey, Jimmy, over here. Jimmy, over here, mate. Don't be shy, Jimmy. Come on over. Jimmy. Show stilts here, that thing you do, you know, the thing. What thing? All right, Jim, how's things? You've been drinking in Brightwall again? And don't let anybody tell you, drinking alone is wrong. That's some of the best times I've had. Anyway, in you go then, mate. Hey, what you want done with your body after you're dead? Jimmy, that really you? What? You look different somehow. Were your eyes always that colour? Nah, Jimmy's got periwinkle eyes like a beautiful summer morning sky. That's not him! It's not Jimmy! That didn't look too bad, mate! Come on, hit him back! That dog bit my mate! At least you'll be feeding the... Keep 
your heads down, boys! Come back shooting at us! Next time, hit him before he hits you! There's enough of us. We'll overwhelm him. Jimmy was my mate! Die! <laughs> You've left quite a trail of bodies. You're not one of Sabine's dwellers, that's for damn sure. But you'll die like one. Where'd you get that 
blade, not the butter dish. I still have the strength to crush you. One of the living dead. One. This battle is yours. Kill me or let me live. It's your choice. And my men will honor it. We may be nothing but mercenaries, but we have our codes, like any other soldiers. We'll leave the dwellers be, no matter what you do. That is a warrior's promise. Thank you. I won't forget this. Let the stranger go! You have taken another step on the road to rule. Sparing Saker has won over the support of his followers. Word is already spreading of your compassion and your strength.
It is a momentous occasion, sir. Your first victory in battle. I'm no expert on personal combat, but I would say, based on the fact that you're not dead, you acquitted yourself rather well. It's hard to believe that just a few days ago I was rousing you from a comfortable bed. Sir Walter is still waiting for you in the Brightwall Tavern. He seems to... It would seem that you have completed two of the tasks that Sabine... If you return to Brightwall, you will find Sir Walter has some news on how to fulfill the last requirement. Feather in my beer. Is that normal? Ah, uh, yes. The ah, here he is. We were just talking about you. Indeed, we have made a toast to your stupendous feat in ridding Miss Peak of Saker and his men. They have been a source of great distress for some time. Nobody will be more pleased than Sabine. His dwellers might find some peace now. Of course. Nobody has suffered more than they. I've been telling Samuel here about the terrible situation they're in. He thinks he may be able to help. Uh, yes, well, uh, perhaps. I, I mean, of course. The thing is, as I was just explaining to Sir Walter, Brightwall has no overabundance of resources itself. The King's levies are rather steep and we face shortages more often than is comfortable. But? But, were you to improve things around Brightwall, the people would be most grateful. And when people are grateful, they're also charitable. I'm sure they would find it in their hearts to send aid to those poor people. There you have it. The way I see it. You will need all the followers you can get if you're going to lead a successful rebellion. What better time to start? I heartily agree with Sir Walter. Pardon me for overhearing. As it happens, I've learned of a promising method for amassing followers. If you'll return to the Sanctuary at your earliest convenience, I can show you what I mean. Ah, now, the book says there is an additional rather amazing capability. An excellent way to gain followers is by helping villagers in need. Take a closer look at Brightwall, and I will explain more. You can now see the villagers in need. You can also see how many followers you must amass to impress Samuel and the people of Brightwall. Select a villager to help. By doing so, you will gain the respect and loyalty of others in the region. This is terrible. Somehow the gate got open, and all of my chickens are this. Right. You've a new suit in your wardrobe, a new feathery suit. You're dressed as a chicken. What are you? What are you? What are you planning to do, dressed as a chicken? Contrary to what most people think. They won't fall for any of that. Come here, chicky chicky, I got some lovely treats for you. Oh no, too smart. You have to defeat them psychologically. No, they won't remain one concentrated force. They'll have redeployed into groups of three or so to maximize their tactical advantage. When you find one of these squads, flap your wings and such, and they should follow you back here. But don't let them try to negotiate with you. You do not want those little buggers inside your head, believe me. <laughs> That's lovely. Just keep doing what you're doing. And no matter what, don't show them any fear. A 
Have you got anything to eat? You're doing great. We can't afford any mistakes. Broken another chair, need a new table. <laughs> That's all of them. At last, the town can rest easy. Oh, Bernard, you've got to lock them up again. This isn't right. They deserve to be free. You're always on about the chickens and their freedom. You know what I think? I think it was you let them out. You're right. All right. We'll let them live. But only if you swear never to let them out again. All right. All right. We'll work this out. I hope I haven't made a terrible mistake. But if I killed them, I would just make them martyrs. Oh, I just don't know about this. It's what's best, Bernard. It's the right thing to do. I wish I could believe that. I really do. Now we just have to figure out a compromise. Haven't I compromised enough? We need to figure out a way the chickens can get the most out of their lives while still making you feel safe. You need more followers. Try... Vile fiend! One wretch! <laughs> it is tragedy that this fair city demands we must oh, leave their I'll souls the not starve business. their minds. Oh, foul and wreck yourself! Music, laughter, la- You, good sir, you who li- Ah, <gasps> you will find the legendary lost play. Splendid! Finally, tragedy and comedy will come together as they should. Turn back now, mortal one!
stay away from this only death place. and insanity await you. Don't pick it up! No! Really, I'm serious! You lot just can't leave well enough alone, can you? Bloody literary tourists, bane of my afterlife! Listen, you. You're not getting my lost plate, you hear? It's rubbish. Worse than rubbish. I mean, what was I thinking mixing tragedy and comedy? I must have been off my rocker. It would seem, my dear fellow, you have been apprehended by the ghost of Philip Morley. That makes us both his captives. I am Ransom Locke. If the name seems familiar, it is because I was once a detective of some renown. And yet, here I am, ready to live out the rest of my days, trapped in a book. As far as I can deduce, we are currently in a scene from one of Morley's greatest romantic plays, the near tragedy of Oliver and Ethel. I believe if we are to escape, we must act out the scene. But performing is not one of my talents. If I am correct, putting on this costume should set things in motion. Oh, Ethel, my love, my life, my son, if thou wouldst but give me one sign, one gesture that would speak of your affections, then might I think this grey existence worth living. Ah, uh, yes, a classic moment in the play. You are Ethel, the beautiful young daughter of a dung merchant. Show Oliver that you love him, and we may be able to leave this scene. My heart is yours, my love. Let the heavens and the seas, the toads and the eels sing the song in my heart, for she doth love me, and all is well. We shall meet again in the morrow, my little ferret, and elope into the sunset to live out our days in wondrous joy. A magnificent rendition. Truly, I applaud you. Hmm. I see you are gifted with remarkable literary cunning, but can you really comprehend the depths of my work? That we shall see. Ah, yes. This is undoubtedly a scene from one of Morley's earlier, funnier plays, Bloodbath at the Royal Court. And this must be your costume. The role of the fool is one filled with tragic death. It will require a masterful performance. What fresh insolence is this? Out of my throne, you impertinent buffoon! Stand before your king, and do your jester's duty! Tis a troublesome time for this court, and my crown grows heavy. So make me laugh, or I shall have your head. Kuchi kuchi koo! <laughs> oh, stop! It's too funny! I believe I'm in the right mood now to meet with those foreign delegates. I think I shall only behead half of them. Yes. I have never seen a more convincing fool. There is hope for us yet. Mm, you handle my royal dramas as well as you handle my romances. But will your versatility extend to the more subtle domains of theatre, I wonder? 
Oh dear. Unless I'm mistaken, this is a scene from Morley's notoriously violent historical epic, Titus the Mutilator, Part 2. Which would mean this is the gladiatorial arena from Act 5, where Titus is finally slaughtered by savage warriors seeking revenge. A favorite scene of mine as a child, I must admit. And here is Titus's famous costume. I had some pajamas that looked just like it. Put it on and you will take on the greatest role of your life. Titus! Thy pox-membered body shall pay for thy monstrous villainy. My son lies dead because of you. Now shall revenge be mine. Cold is your corpse and all the more flavorsome for it. Do try to make your demise convincing. Nice tattoo. I think I'll cut it off you. Ooh, that shot looks nasty. You all right down there, boy? Not you, idiot! He's making you look bad! Hairy pups! That was inhuman! More of my kin lie slain, and yet you live! Sulfur-scented breath, Titus! I'm gonna grind you into hamburgers. I mean like proper hamburgers. Casting spells? Why can't you fight like a You're not gonna burn me! What the hell are you? Cut out the skull's heart! Don't stand! Ah, that's gonna leave a mark! I've never seen anything like... All my men, dead! My vengeance, denied! My world, undone! I cannot stand to live one second more! A tremendous performance. That's just the ending I wanted to see when I was a young boy attending the theatre every weekend. I wonder what scene will follow now. Oh, what scene could possibly follow such a masterful rendition of my work? And the way you improvised some of those roles, you brought new life to my words. I stand in awe. You have earned the prize no mortal has ever been honored with before. My missing play. I entrust it to you, for I know that you will do it justice. I call it the Ham Sandwich. A metaphorical title, of course. Ah, you have retrieved our aged investigator. Happy We're day! Saved, have you perchance found? Oh, the joy in my bosom knows no bounds! Thank you a million times! Thank you! <laughs> His head bosom! It's already working! Comedy and tragedy will at last join hands! Hark! Bear witness to the tragic futility that is man. Oh, how it doth sear my senses to see paradise and yet to be barred. That reminds me of a great joke. A guard, a monk and a chicken walk into a bar. Unfortunately, the bartender had had a mild heart attack that morning, so none of them get served. And yet what purpose doth heartache serve when the infinite dark blanket that is death Falls soft 
softly upon our still beating corpse. That reminds me of another one. A corpse walks into a bar and says, Can I have a lemonade? Certainly, replies the bartender. I've never seen a stiff drink. And so endeth our happy sad play, which reminds us we are made of nothing but clay. There's time only for our fool to say... Great big giant bosoms! What the hell was that? Biggest load of old tosh I ever saw. It didn't even make sense. Worst play ever. Well done. You have gathered quite an impressive following in Brightwall. This should be more than enough to convince this little hamlet to send aid to the I'm dweller. beginning to understand I why I believe Samuel Phillips awaits you at the town Morgan gates to express that very this sentiment. particular piece of work in his life. If you're not too busy, you might have a look in the sack. You have several new suits. Those will make dressing easy. Are you comfortable? I'm not entirely certain that the mannequin is. Ah, very good indeed. An excellent choice of jacket. Just as appropriate for a soldier of fortune as it is for... Well, that's actually probably about the extent of it. Ah, very good. Yes, I always did appreciate the Dweller's aesthetic. Those boots look quite functional, if the function is kicking someone to death. Well, if you prefer it that way, who am I to judge whether a change of apparel is significantly detrimental to one's appearance? Indeed, it is too far. Weapons in all shapes and sizes. Just we have you. a shortage of some goods. Great. Esteemed citizens of Brightwall, today we demonstrate the generous nature of our fair town. For too long have our mountain neighbors suffered in silence, and now we extend a helping hand. But this effort would not have been possible without the courage and determination of one man, the son of the old hero king. From this day, we shall know you as the hero of Brightwall. Before you leave, we ask of you one favor. As we pledge ourselves to you, so we hope you will pledge to return Brightwall to its former glory and reopen the academy which your father founded. I will. Very, very good, very good. I expected nothing less from you. These volunteers shall carry the supplies to the Dweller Camp. Uh, they may have them with our blessing. I hope you will return one day, not just as our hero, but as our king. Upon that wall, you're... You have done a wonderful thing for those poor people. Our hero returns, bringing good tidings. 
<laughs> and supper. <laughs> Damn thing doesn't open. How do you um? Oh well, I never thought you'd actually get it. Tell you the truth, Boulder. We've been blessed, my friends. We have made an alliance that has already brought us life. One day, it will bring us much more. We require but one more offering before we fight at your side. Ah, Boulder. Promise to restore these mountains to their full glory and to protect our right to dwell in them. And promise you will bring nothing but the fiercest justice upon Logan's head. I promise. Then may we be carried into the castle by the dark storms of fury! We'll have to wait a little longer for that. It's still just us against a whole army. We need to recruit more people. Mm, I was afraid you'd come over all logical and sensible. Well, you have brought us a feast, and we are free to hunt again. We'll just keep on eating and drinking till you're good and ready. Right, Border? <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't be happier. You have made an important ally today. The revolution cannot hope to succeed without fighters such as Sabine and his people on your side. You have the beginnings of an army now. 